Hi, I'm John Raffrano for Boris TV and welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at mastering lights and shadows. I know in previous tutorials, I've manipulated the lights and told you we'd have a tutorial on just on lighting and this is the one. Uh, so let me show you how you can get better control of the lighting in uh, Boris BCC7. I'm going to start with a new project and uh, we'll insert a video track and then we'll insert an empty event uh, and then I'll go to the plugin manager and I'm just going to drag uh, extruded text onto this event. Now, um, all of these 3D extruded objects have lights associated with them, so when you learn it for one, you learn it for them all. I'm using text because uh, we're going to show you how to use a light with a shadow, and the shadows show up better on text. Uh, let me launch the text window, and we'll put just a word, nice big bold word in here. Uh, and then I'm going to add some material onto here so you can see the lights better. And I like this blue plastic because it's really uh, reflective. Okay. You'll notice that up at the top of all of these um, 3D objects, there's built-in light 1, built-in light 2, and built-in light 3. Uh, and if we turn on the other lights, uh, the scene gets quite well lit. Um, but let's look at where they're actually coming from. So if you look at this first light here, light one, it looks like that light is shining down from the upper left. If we turn that off and turn on light two, you'll see that one is coming up from the lower right. And if we turn that off and turn on the third light, that one is coming from the upper light. But you have total control over where these lights are coming from and what they're pointing to. So let's just start with this first built-in light. I'm gonna turn that on and then come down to the lighting and open up built-in light one. The first thing you'll notice is there are several types of lights we can use. It defaults to a point light, which is the equivalent of a light bulb uh, in a room. So let's take a look at the attributes for the point light. It has a source X and Y, and just as we guessed in the picture, it's coming from the upper left. But you can move that light anywhere you want uh, around this object. Sorry, so it can come from the lower left or come from right in the middle, wherever you'd like to shine this from. Uh, the other thing to note is that there is also a Z associated with it. So that will pull the light closer to you or push it further away. Uh, and actually you can push it behind the object. So let's move the Z and we'll see that moving the Z in the positive is bringing the light back so that more of the light is shining on this object. Turning the Z down to the negative, you'll see that the light actually went past the object. Okay, so right about that zero point, it was uh, right over the object and then it was going behind it. And there are times when you might want to light the object from behind. And so you would use the Z in order to do that. I'm going to double click just to bring that back to the uh, default setting. You'll also notice that the light has a color and so we can change the color of the light. Uh, and we can change that color to any color um, that of course is going to mix with the color of the object or we can leave the lights as white. So I'm going to just bring these back up to white, but you can make them any color that you'd like. Then we've got the intensity. So this is kind of like a dimmer. You can turn it down, you can bring it back up, you can over-intensify it um, or under-intensify it or bring it all the way down to nothing. So this is the way that you would bring the lights up from uh, black. And then there's attenuation, which is kind of like putting scrims in front of lights, right? It's actually attenuating the light. and At some level, it's blocking off the light and you, you'll see that it's not just flatly fading. It's really attenuating it down to smaller and smaller until it, until it goes away. So that's, that, that's the attenuation. Now, some of these others are grayed out because they're for different types of lights. So let me go through the next type of light, which is the spotlight. Uh, the spotlight also has a source, and the source is kind of where that spotlight is hanging, not necessarily where it's pointing to. Where the spotlight is pointing is the target. So if we open up the target, you'll see that I can now change where this spotlight is pointing. It's pointing to the left, now it's pointing over to the right. And just like a real light, if the, if the light is located on the left and pointing left, it's going to have a smaller focal point than if I keep it on the left and move it over to the right, in which case it's really casting uh, a longer throw. And if I then move the light over, you'll see that the light again will change. So these, these operate just like real lights, just like you were putting real lights in a set. You want to do three-point lighting, you could set that up with these three lights. I'm going to move this to the middle so that we can show you uh, the next set of parameters. 
target Z, of course, would go back in space or closer to you as to where uh, this is targeted. When you get to a spotlight, you also have angle and fall off. And I'm going to set the fall off to zero in order to demonstrate the angle. So now that the fall off is zero, I've got a nice sharp edge on my light. And you can see that I can adjust the angle, you know, just like uh, opening and closing an, an aperture on, on a light, on a real light. Um, I can focus the angle in a little closer and then I can adjust the fall off at any point. So I can get a real nice pinpoint spot or if I want hard edges, I could uh, turn the fa fall off down and get really hard edges on this light. So between the angle and the fall off are going to really control kind of the cone of light that hits your object. Now the next thing I want to show you is the spot with the shadow and that's only on this first built-in light do you get spot with the shadow and it's a little easier to see um, if I, let me, let me turn it off for a moment and go to transforms and I just want to rotate this text a bit and bring it closer to you. Uh, and when I say bring it closer, I really want to just scale it up. I really don't want to move it in space because I don't want to change the lighting. But I'm kind of focusing on this H here and I'm hoping uh, that if I position this light correctly, so let me take this source and I want to bring the source up above. And then I want to use spot and shadow. There you go. And you see the shadows. Look down here on the H. You can see the shadow being made. So here, the, the light is coming down and there's really no shadow being cast. Um, and, you know, this, it's just clean in here. And then when I turn on the shadow, I see the shadow being cast. So, you know, that is how you would add shadows if you wanted to cast shadows uh, on these lights. So let me go back to a point light uh, and let me reset this object uh, here. I want to uh, reset the rotation. Okay, and I just want to scale it back again. Okay, now I have the front of this object lit. I want to move my camera around to the back of the object. So let me go to the built-in camera. Uh, and let me use an orbit camera. And we have a whole tutorial on uh, cameras and how to control them. I'll use this orbit camera and that will allow me to uh, spin around the object. And I'm just going to spin over to the back of the object. And you'll notice the back of the object is dark because the light is in front of it. Uh, so one of the things that I can do is I can turn on another light. I'll take built-in light two, turn that on. Uh, I can then come down to the second light, and uh, that would be right in here, built-in light two. Uh, and now I can start playing with the Z of this light to bring the light behind the object. Right. So now I've moved it back so that it's behind the object, so that when I move my camera, we'll go back on my camera and rotate it around, uh, and I rotate my camera, the object is lit in the front and it's also lit in the back. So you can position your lights around the object uh, to get various lighting. However, if you just want the back to light up, there's an easier way to do this. Let me go up and turn off that second light and show you that in the materials, I'm going to open up this front material here. Down in the materials, there's an option that says two-sided lighting. So this will kind of save you having to use a light to position in the back if you want to have all three lights in the front. You can turn on two-sided lighting and look at that back light up. And I'm going to rotate uh, back around with the camera. Uh, let me not use the transforms. Let me use the camera here. Uh, and I want to take that spin and spin it around so I can see the back. And sure enough, the back is also lit up. So I can have all my lights in the front, all three of them, uh, and still have lighting in the back by using that two-sided lighting. So it's just another option for you to use uh, when you're lighting your scene. I'm going to turn that off for now. And let me show you how I set up uh, the, the initial scene. I'm just going to use this existing word. And let me go up and turn on all the lights, because I'm going to use all three of them. Then I'll come down and make them all spotlights. And let me, while I'm here, let me uh, fix this uh, camera so that we're dead on. We can really see these lights. And now I'll go in and take the first light and we're going to make that a spotlight. And I'm going to put that spot in the, the upper. As a matter of fact, let me put them all in the center and then have this spot come over to the corner. I'm going to go down to the next one built-in light 2, make that a spotlight, and we will change the source of that one to be more towards the middle, 
and have that spot go over to the corner. And then I want to go to built-in light three, change that to a spotlight, and we'll have this source be more, uh, it's going to make it a little bit higher up here. And I'll have that one just go off to the uh, lower right here. Or maybe just down here. All right, so now I've got those three initially set up. Now what I want to do is I want to animate the target XY. So I'm going to go up to the first light, the first built-in light, go to the target XY, uh, turn on animation. I'm going to go to the end and add another keyframe because I want it to start and end with the same keyframe. Matter of fact, before I do, uh, let me make change these keyframes. I'm going to right-click and make them smooth uh, because I want them to the lights to be... Uh, very smooth when I when they end so I'll make sure all these are smooth and then we'll go to the middle so let's go to uh, 2 minutes and 15 uh, 2 seconds uh, rather in 15 frames uh, and here's where we'll do the animation so I'm let me make this a little smaller and I'm gonna take my target XY and I'm gonna move it down to the corner. So what it will do is it will come down to the corner and back. Then we'll go, and, and let me close this so it's easier to see these, because I realize I'm working in really, matter of fact, I can pull this down a bit so we could see more of this. Then I'll do the same thing for built-in light two. I will turn on the target XY animation by pressing the animation button. I will make sure that I scroll down to that target animation here. Uh, I just want to come up a little. And uh, I want to right click on that and make it smooth. Then I want to go to the end and duplicate that by adding uh, another keyframe, make that smooth. And then I want to come back again to my uh, 215. And then we'll make this one go up to the right. And so that one will be going up in. Uh, let me. Let me open the angle here. Oh, you know what's... I'm wondering why I can't see this. And it's because I changed the, uh, the source Z earlier in the tutorial. Uh, so that one's in the upper right. And let, me, let me bring that angle down a little bit more. There we go. And then we'll go down and do the last one. And then we'll be all done here with this, uh, with this effect. So let me go to three. You're kind of getting the idea here. Uh, I turn on the keyframes. I go down to this keyframe and make it smooth. I'm going to go to the end, add another keyframe, make that smooth. I click on it, right click, smooth. Uh, and then we'll come again to the same spot in the middle, two seconds, 15 frames. And we'll move this one maybe uh, up in this direction here, just a little bit. Okay, now let's play that and see what we have. And there are the three lights converging and then going off to the center. Uh, kind of in a Hollywood uh, movie style effect. So that wraps it up. Hopefully you now understand lighting a lot better. And if you need more information, drop by BorisFX.com. This is John Raffrano for Boris TV. Until next time, thanks for watching.